Despite being an extremely hot topic in both the crypto and art spaces right now, NFTs are extremely misunderstood. So in this episode of Crypto Bits, I'm going to take you from having no idea what NFTs are, all the way through to being able to explain them proficiently to anyone who might ask you in the future, what is an NFT? Before I get into the video, NFT stands for non-fungible token. But to be honest, I don't think you actually need to know what that means to understand what NFTs are. So for now, I just want you to keep in mind the word token. An NFT isn't actually the art or data, it's just a token representing it. But I'll go more into detail about that and what non-fungible token actually means once I've explained what NFTs do and are. Now, despite the fact that NFTs can be any digital data, not just art, the easiest way to understand what they are is to compare them to traditional art. In the art world, there's the concept of provenance. This is just the history of a piece of art going all the way back to when it was created. Take the Mona Lisa, for example. Before the Mona Lisa was created, Da Vinci made a version of the Mona Lisa, which has now been dubbed the earlier Mona Lisa. Now, if you go to monalisa.org, you can actually see the provenance of this earlier Mona Lisa all the way back to the point that it was created. Provenance is used as a record of proof of ownership. This, along with many other factors, go into determining whether or not a piece of art is real or not. The problem with provenance when it comes to real world art, however, is the fact that we have to base it entirely on first-hand accounts. There was no blockchain back in Da Vinci's age for him to write the Mona Lisa to, and therefore it's incredibly hard to prove the provenance of incredibly old pieces or even forged artwork where they've falsified provenance. And in fact, this is exactly what the famous art forger John Drew did. John Drew had an accomplice create forgeries of famous but lost pieces of art. He would then go on to forge provenance for them using fake certificates of authenticity, fake invoices for previous sales, and even go as far as to forge certificates of ownership to be able to build a false but unverifiable history for that item so that he could then sell it for millions. This didn't even happen all that long ago. John Drew was only arrested in 1995 after spending multiple years falsifying museum and gallery records to insert his fake pieces of art into their inventories during time periods he needed provenance for. So what if, instead of relying on these first-hand accounts that can be forged by anyone smart enough to do so, such as John Drew, we had a public and completely verifiable and immutable version of this provenance. Well, this is exactly what an NFT represents. It is, for all intents and purposes, impossible to change something that has happened on the blockchain. Explaining why this the case would be outside of the scope of this video, but all you really need to know is that once something happens on the blockchain, that's it. It is written for all time. Using the most popular blockchain for NFTs as an example, this means that you, from the moment that Ethereum's first block was created on the 30th of July 2015 to now, can see see every single event that has ever occurred. So when we create, or as it's known in the crypto space, mint an NFT, what you are doing is creating a timestamp and a fingerprint on the blockchain that will be there for all of eternity. Now, before I move on to explaining this in a little greater detail, you might be wondering why are people buying them and why might you want to buy one? Well, currently a lot of people are buying NFTs purely due to price speculation. In the same way that people buy traditional art, they like the art that's attached, and they hope that one day it might appreciate in value. Without going too far into my personal opinion of NFTs, I think that right now a lot of people are just buying them for the profit. Unlike people who are seeking out Monet's, Dali's, or Rembrandt paintings, people are purely just buying NFTs because they think the price will go up, and not necessarily because the art that's attached to it has any intrinsic value. However, further in this video, I will get into a much more realistic real world use case that I think NFTs will eventually be used for. So getting back to explaining why this fingerprint on the blockchain is so important. Well, you can see exactly who created an NFT. Let's use this Pokemon card as an example of why this is important. This card sells for anywhere between one and ten thousand dollars. But unlike the Mona Lisa, there's an unknown quantity of these in existence. This means that if a forger came along and made a good enough job of copying this card, they could fool a human authenticator. Now, if you were the buyer of this rare card, you would just have to assume that that authenticator knows what he's talking about and the card that you've just bought is definitely made by the Pokemon company because you have no way of knowing otherwise. Well, this isn't the case with NFTs. If I was to take the thumbnails for all of my videos, 
photos and turn them into NFTs, they would all be minted from my wallet address. This means that if someone else came along, right clicked one of my thumbnails, copied it to his PC and tried to mint it for himself and sell it, the buyer would be able to trace it back and see that it didn't originate from me, it originated from them and is therefore a forgery. Using this random NFT that I found as an example, we can see that it has four transactions in its history, with the first one being when it was minted. Now, if we click on that transaction hash, we can actually see what smart contract minted it. In this case, it was the Bored Ape Yacht Club. This means that we can verify that this Bored Ape is in fact a legitimate one. Because everything that happens on the blockchain is public and traceable, you can see where something originated. This would be essentially the same as being able to take a piece of art in real life and be able to see its entire history exactly as it happened without needing to rely on third party or missing data. Because everything that happens on the blockchain is public and entirely traceable back through its entire history, an NFT or a piece of art attached to an NFT can be traced back to its original source. This is one aspect of NFTs that a lot of people overlook, especially when trying to make fun of them. Similarly to how if you copied the Mona Lisa, it would not be the Mona Lisa. If you copy someone's NFT, you're not taking the provenance of that NFT. You are just making a copy of the image attached. The value comes from the provenance and the fact you can trace it back to its source. The thing is though, NFTs don't just have to be art. They can be any form of digital data, including songs or even documents. So now that I've got the basics explained, I feel I can explain the term non-fungible token in a way that will actually make sense. Non-fungible simply means it's one of a kind. Similar to the Mona Lisa, if you make a copy, you don't have the original. And token just means that you can transfer it between wallet addresses on the blockchain. But the big question with NFTs and one that only really lawmakers can answer is if you sell a piece of art with an NFT attached, are you selling the actual art or just the data that's been written to the blockchain? This is something that needs to be answered and relatively soon because the number one use for NFTs at this current time is for trading digital art. The problem is that the digital art itself isn't actually stored on the blockchain. It's stored somewhere else on the internet and the link to that piece of art is the bit that's stored on the blockchain. This because for every piece of data stored on the blockchain, there is a cost attached. And unfortunately, that cost is quite high. And because images are fairly large, it means it would be prohibitively expensive to actually store the image itself on the blockchain. Now, when an artist sells digital art, they themselves normally keep the copyright regardless of who the art now belongs to. And this makes sense. You've bought the art, but not the right to reproduce it. However, you're not actually buying the art with the NFT. You are simply just buying the token that represents the art. And this gets into a gray area of have you actually purchased the art or have you just bought the provenance of it? Alongside this is the fact that because the image itself is not stored on the blockchain, the image might not survive forever. Unlike data that's written to the blockchain, any data that's hosted on the surface web or on servers around the globe could and will eventually disappear, meaning that you might be left with the provenance and no image to show for it. And if that was the case, all you'd really be left with is a link to nothing. So instead, I'm gonna explain an application for NFTs that I think has much more grounding in the real world. Luxury alcohol is and always has been a very large market and a market in which fakes still exist and are catching people out at a growing rate. So let's say that I open Sprague Distillery and I plan to uncask and bottle a whiskey that's gonna cost $5,000 a bottle. Once these bottles have changed hands a few times, it would be very hard to actually tell whether or not one of them originated at my distillery or not. So what if instead we used NFTs to create a digital provenance for this item? If as each bottle was sealed, I minted an NFT for that bottle number and upon sale of that bottle transferred both the bottle and the NFT to the buyer, this would act as a certificate of authenticity, a seal of ownership, and also start building a digital provenance for this bottle. If the person that bought this bottle then wanted to sell it to someone else, they could give both the bottle and the NFT to the new buyer, adding a new line in its digital history. Now, similarly to real world art sales, if the provenance can't be built, you can still sell the object. 
but you might not get as much for it. So in this case, people could still sell the whiskey without the NFT, but the NFT would effectively act as a verifiable real world trust saying that this bottle is what it says it is. This to me is the most applicable use for NFTs, not just for art or data or anything, but the fact that using the blockchain, we can create a verifiable public and immutable history for an object going all the way back to its source. In summary, NFTs are just a way to create a one-of-a-kind fingerprint for an item, whether that's a piece of digital art, a song, or a real-world asset. And while most NFTs currently being sold are in the art realm, I think that NFT's long-term value is actually in its real-world potential. Being able to write something to an immutable ledger that will stay around forever is a way for us to build provenance for items that does not rely on first or third hand information to do so. And so using this, we should hopefully be able to cut down on the number of forgeries in both the art or any other sectors of society. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you now understand NFTs a little more, let me know down in the comments that I've done a decent job. And if you do just generally enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. Thanks, bye.